So it's, it's crucial to remember how um, typically the mind has two kinds of thoughts. And the Buddha realized this before he became a Buddha, when he was struggling to find a way. And um, he noticed in his mind there were these two thoughts, and which dictated everything else that followed, meaning feelings that came in, the mood of the moment, or the mood for the rest of the day, all emanated from a type of a thought. And then he saw that they are two kinds in nature, therefore. So one is wholesome, he called it kusala, and the other one he saw to be unwholesome, which is akusala. Or you can call them skillful and unskillful, or good or bad, whichever you choose, it's yeah. still the same. Yeah. And then he had this uh, idea, which I always see it as such a brilliant um, you know, um, uh, technique, so simple. He said, well, why don't I go ahead and pile these thoughts into their particular or respective piles? Meaning, can I pile the unwholesome thoughts into one and the same goes for the wholesome ones into their own? So he does. And then, so he has two piles to choose from. He says, from now on, I'm only going to choose from the wholesome pile, mm -hmm. which is the simple part I, I mentioned, like it's so ingenious, it's so practical, mm -hmm. simple to do. Um, but it requires mindfulness to be able to distinguish between what is a wholesome from the unwholesome thought. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, with uh, feelings, like yesterday the question came up about, and during the Dhamma Talks Q&A, uh, about emotions and how emotions can affect a person's um, well-being mm -hmm. and uh, in regards to mental activity and how mental activity is not a good thing I was mentioning earlier. So the distinction has to be made that the emotional mood, we need to look at it in the context of feeling because the Buddha separated feelings from emotions as well. Mm. Emotions can be many, many, but feelings generally can be broken down into three, uh, pleasant, painful, mm. and neither pleasant or painful. Mm. So these are the most basic uh, categorization of, of feelings. Now, jealousy is definitely not a pleasant feeling. Mm. It's a painful feeling. Mm. Uh, joy is a pleasant feeling. Envy is a painful feeling. All these things, they, they fall into one of these three feeling categories. So similarly, when you are feeling or emotionally, you feel like you're in a mood that is uncomfortable for you. Mm. You have a tendency of, let's say, that day, that morning, to want to leave your seat to go to the next room. And you don't even know why you went to the kitchen. Mm. You know, yeah. you want to run back to the living room and turn on the TV and you don't even know why. Mm. Suddenly you want to look outside the window to check out your neighbors and what's going on. Is there any a dog passing by? What are you doing? Mm. To me, it seems that the person is running away mm. from some uncomfortable mood that they're in, that they are, uh, they walked into. I can't even say they are locked up in mm -hmm. or imprisoned in because they walked into that. Because when the first thought occurred, maybe it's a thought about comparison, mm -hmm. oneself mm -hmm. to oneself and their from their past and say, oh, I wish I was making more money. I wish I was this, whatever, or to others or some bad news you heard or something that is like what you were expecting didn't turn out to be the case. Mm -hmm. So there's this jilt. There's like, ah! And then you say, I'm going to hide that pile of rubbish. I'm going to hide that thing. And I'm not going to affect, let it affect me. Mm. Meanwhile, you didn't deal with it. You didn't address it. Mm. Hence, now you're feeling you're uncomfortable. You need to get up from your seat, from your meditation, and go to the next room. And those distractions, whatever you see or experience, are not enough. 
So now you want to leave and go to another room. Mm. Now people do this throughout their lifetimes. They go from one relationship to the next. They go from one job to the next. Mm. One neighborhood to the next. One country to the next. So it can be quite um, overwhelmingly present throughout one's different phases of life. Mm. And they still would not know why they're doing this. I mean, if they're lucky, somebody will point them in the direction of a good teacher or a psycho, very good psychotherapist mm. that will um, pr- you know, process this with them and highlight the problem area. Mm. And then they might go, might go, aha, now I know why there was this whole massive discontent in my life. Mm. It wasn't the world around me that was displeasing. Mm. I had this issue that I never addressed. So for this reason, we go ahead and look at the mind having these different states coming in and going out. Mm. And by identifying, thanks to mindfulness, which one is helpful to you? Mm. Is it wholesome or is it unhelpful? Is it dangerous? Is it the unwholesome one? Wholesome and unwholesome. And then putting them in their respective piles. Mm. And from that point on, the Buddha says, and then, after I had these two piles, I chose to only pick from the skillful pile. Mm. Plain and simple. And he never looked at the unwholesome one. Mm. He simply chose to ignore what the mind was saying, if it was unwholesome. He didn't want to have anything to do with it. Never gave it a time of day. Nope, I know where you lead. When I start comparing myself to you, to this, to that, I know where it will lead. It will make me feel very small Mm. or superior to someone else. Mm. Why? The point of life is to have a tranquil mind from where you can actually experience happiness. Mm. If you can achieve that quiet mind... You've done the impossible. You've conquered the most powerful army in 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 the in existence. Mm. Your mind. And when you have done that, in the midst of that process, as you're doing it, in fact, you will have enough insights left and right (coughs) that will allow you to choose better uh, choices. Mm-hmm. better options, better steps for you to take. Mm-hmm. Irrespective of what kind of a life you've lived up to that point. So there is this conscious, aware, free thinking, uh, choice making, intentional action to go ahead and say, no, I'm good. I don't have to be a prisoner of my past. Because mm-hmm. I'm. I just made that decision now. Thank you very much. 30 years have gone by, wasted, da 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 da. Yeah, but now I'm living here. Mm -hmm. Show me where those 30 years are. No one can. My memory could, but I'm in the business of making new, healthy memories for my mind. Mm -hmm. So if my past memories of myself, my choices and actions are unwholesome, guess what I'm supposed to do with them? Mm -hmm. Put them in their pile. And sweep them away by every single time going and choosing from the healthier pile. And if you don't have a healthier pile, if the person has been surrounded by toxicity, Mm -hmm. expose yourself to that kind of thought. Read, let's say, the suttas. Listen to the suttas, like I'm recording, for example, to make life easier for everyone, actually, Mm -hmm. uh, who's interested. Uh, Or listen to Dhamma talks. Mm -hmm. Take walks by yourself with your dogs. Cook something delicious. And if you don't know how to cook, go ahead and explore that and learn how to cook. Uh, clean your house with, with, uh, uh, without any expectations, but with involved attention mm. to detail. Treat it as if it's your mind you're cleaning, even though it's your house. Mm. If you have something stuck in a carpet and it doesn't want to come out, 
Think of it like a habit, a nasty habit that doesn't seem to want to leave your mind or your life. Instead of going at it with a hacksaw, try to work around it patiently. And all of a sudden, you're teaching your mind how to deal with those negative habits as well as cleaning your floor, Mm. your carpeting. So then you see how there is no difference between your own meditative practice, daily meditative practice, and your life in general. Mm. And that's what the Buddha was always going after, to inculcate, to bring about this sense of meditation needs to be one's own life. Mm. It's not reserved from, for some monastic, a bald-headed monk like me. No. No, you can taste the wonderful things that the Buddha talked about, explained in your life as a layperson mm. without missing anything. Mm. And living a superbly lofty, beautiful life that's full of insights and one that influences the whole world around you. Mm. Wow. And you do not know, you do not need to be a politician to change the world. Even your thoughts, your actions, your kind words are changing them. Every time you go into a grocery store and you smile and you say thank you to someone who's sending you and you capture them in their life, you give them a taste of their own life in a pleasant way. You remind them of being happy. You remind them, and you without even saying a word, in some cases. And all of a sudden, you're creating those reverberations, those ripples in the universe, on this planet, in, in our society. And the things that you bought from the grocery store, you bring it here, and guess what? That's going to turn into wonderful, delicious food mm-hmm. as well. So to me, that is like living in a heavenly realm the closest thing we can come in a, in this human body. And that's what the Buddha talked about as Brahma Viharas, where we have metta, which is loving kindness, compassion, not sympathy, compassion. Mm-hmm. And then a mudita, which is altruistic joy, which means um, your joy becomes my joy. Mm-hmm. No difference. There's not even a tiny little silver lining between us. And then equanimity. These qualities come into the person's life all of a sudden and they don't stay there. They spread out. Mm -hmm. All because the mind was able to detect the wholesome from the unwholesome thought. Mm -hmm. And then going after the wholesome one, Mm -hmm. which requires courage. Because the natural, not natural, but the habitual tendency of the person thinking might have been to go ahead and choose the path of least resistance because of bad habits. Mm -hmm. So the mind will go into that lower, you know, um, strata and uh, pick that. Unless you have mindfulness and clear comprehension or wisdom to go ahead, wait, 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 wait a minute. I've done that for 27 years or so. So, and I know the outcome of that. Even though it's easy, does not mean it's right for me. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and choose the one that is going to make me turn a new page into my life and feel good. Yes, it might be a little bit harder in the beginning, but it won't stay like that. Cleaning up the house is not going to be that hard every single time. You'll develop new, healthier, positive habits, and you'll be able to do a lot more work in faster time with less energy spend expenditure. Mm-hmm. Similarly with the wholesome thoughts being chosen. And when you feel yourself without remorse, contented, so joyful and happy, while you're sitting there in your sofa, there will be no need for you to go to the next room Mm -hmm. or to the next or to turn on the TV Mm -hmm. or to look outside the window. Unless you want to. (laughs) So, yeah. I'll stop it here.